Hello first from the web. My name is Scar, and this is the story of Scott Chamberlain's, aka Grey Muzzle. Stay tuned. <laughs> Furries are weird. This is not something a lot of people shy away from. Furries are weird, and we know it. Weird enough that this fandom has, over its long history, developed its own slang and lingo. Just with normal language, terms get created and left behind as time marches on. Some examples include how furry costuming started as zooting, and then became fursuiting. Insults started with skunk fucker, and developed into furfag. Some terms that aren't as widespread as they used to be are mundane and yerf. One that has seemed to stand the test of time, though, is persecution. Persecution is a pornoma of furry and persecution, and can basically be described as anti-furry flaming. The definition has never really been set in stone, varying from simple hate to fanatical denouncing. Some take the term seriously, some see it as a word used by overly sensitive people when haters come knocking. There is barely any other word that can replace it in context, though. This is a story about the purest form of persecution. Politics can be a nightmare. Even though I have mixed feelings about many politicians like everyone else in the world, I do have mad respect for anyone who has the bravery to live in that kind of climate. Politics is almost always a heated topic, and getting involved is a full commitment for the rest of your life. People are going to talk about you in both positive and negative ways. In the small state of Connecticut, there was a man named Scott Chamberlain, who was a Democratic council member for the town of New Milford. He was serving his first term, and was up for re-election. He was involved with the fandom in his private life, donning a fursona named Grey Muzzle. For those who are not lingo aficionados, the joke is that Grey Muzzle is a term for older furs or longtime members. He owns two fur suits, Grey Muzzle, who is a fennec fox, and a newer snow leopard suit named Smoke. Scott does a lot of writing, both stories and comics. He also sometimes works security or hosts panels at different East Coast fur cons. All in all, he's really active in the community and has a pretty large presence. He's on Fur Affinity, Ink Buddy, and even So Furry. There are many popular furry sites out there. Fur Affinity may still be the undisputed champion in its size and traffic, but it isn't exactly running a monopoly on the fandom. One of the alternatives favored by many is a website called SoFurry. It offers the ability to upload and share artwork, literature, and music just like for Affinity, but it also includes some more streamlined features like a commission market and a forum built into the website instead of being external. Chamberlain's had an account on SoFurry under the character name Grey Muzzle. Taking a look at his profile, you can tell he has a passion for writing. He was writing a comic you can find in his gallery. Truth be told, it seems like a pretty normal furry profile. Nothing of it really seems outrageous, at least to any ordinary fur. One of the things you can do on your profile is sort preferences into four different categories. These categories are loves, likes, tolerates, and hates. These are used to publicly display what a person thinks of different topics when it comes to material like roleplay or different forms of art. Chamberlain was public about his involvement in the fandom. To anyone who looked, it wasn't really a secret. A resident of New Milford posted a screenshot on his Facebook of Chamberlain's likes and dislikes page from SoFurry. Listed under his tolerate section was rape. This did not set well with some of the other politicians and residents. His re-election was basically in the dumpster. Before long, Mayor David Gronbach was calling for his resignation. He told the New York Post, quote, as public servants, we are held to a higher standard, and Mr. Chamberlain's apparent posts do not meet that standard." Unquote. The mayor would receive his wish as soon Chamberlain would announce his resignation. While the story didn't see widespread attention inside the fandom, it was picked up by a bunch of websites including the New York Post, The Cut, Bleeding Cool, and God, a lot more. A good amount of the sites did their trademark sensationalizing of furries, turning this into another event of bad publicity. Chamberlain's expressed that he tried to keep a positive outlook and was committed to the people of the town. Personally, I see this as a perfect example of persecution. I have heard this notion from some other furs over the last few years that furries have a much better reputation among the public than we used to. I agree with this when it comes to how most the media portrays us, but from my own experiences, it usually seems the general public still have their misconceptions. 
Ever since our early days, internal mistakes combined with media sensationalizing has led to the public perception of the fandom being messy. It's the reason bullying, the free closet, and things like this happen. Media portrayal of the fandom has improved dramatically than it, where it was two decades ago. I'm not going to talk a, a whole lot about how I believe we should go about improving public relations in this video, but I do want to say one thing. If nothing else, we need to explain what we are and stop arguing about what we are not. Furries don't have to go mainstream, but I hope someday this fandom is more accepted by the public at large. Kind of like bronies. But at the end of the day, this was not a very professional move. This should have been handled a lot better in my opinion. Anyway, this was the story of Scott Chamberlain's. If you haven't seen it yet, give my second video on Kiro that just released a watch. I cover the remaining evidence and close my stance on the current topic. Until next time, stay tuned.